the name of God, our creator, Jesus Christ, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be and whenever you are joining us for worship, we are so glad and so thankful that you have joined us today. Today marks the end of a worship series where we've been looking at what it means to gather together. Post-Easter resurrection stories, we find that Jesus is with people. He is in community. He is with his beloved disciples and invites us and calls to us to continue to be in community together, even though community has been so difficult and has been unknown or uncertain of what that looks like in the last year, two years, and in this last season. And so we've been celebrating and seeing the ways that God has called us, invited us to come and be in community. And here at your church, at PCW, you are a part of our church family. And so today is that last day of celebration of to gather together. And yet, even as this is ending, we hope and pray this can continue to be with you in the days, weeks, months ahead, that we are never meant to do anything alone and that God is always with us and that we are always together. And so friends, join with me now once again to gather together. Say that we're wonderfully, 
wonderfully made And you promise that you'll never leave me, oh Lord Oh, that you hand me in both behind and before And I'm wonderfully, wonderfully Friends, today I am I'm not okay. I'm not okay at all. Um, we've come to a point in our culture where mass shootings and hurricanes both end up being big enough to be named. You know, in 1900, we had the Galveston hurricane and then Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Sandy, countless others. There's the Pulse shooting in Orlando, Virginia Tech. Sandy Hook, Columbine, Parkland, and now Uvalde, and again, countless others. This is not the way we are supposed to live. And in the aftermath, the familiar strain rose once more. Our thoughts and our prayers, our thoughts and our prayers rinse and repeat. And let's get something straight. Prayer is incredibly important. Prayer is powerful stuff, but thoughts and prayers, this is a phrase that we use in order to say something nice in the moment, let people know that we're thinking of them and feel bad about it, but doing so without actually having to do anything. People interviewed in the aftermath have said, I can't imagine what these families are going through. If you can't imagine, it is because you are working hard not to. And sports arenas across the country held moments of silence. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers, rinse and repeat. This is not the way we are supposed to live. Thoughts and prayers start rolling in, and as a pastor, my mind races to... I hate, I despise your festivals. I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. God speaks through the words of Amos and those words, reminding us that our thoughts and our prayers, our gestures to the holy are not at all what is holy. Thoughts and prayers, solemn assemblies, moments of silence. It's a mockery of what God calls us to. This is not the way we are supposed to live. So many of us has been shaken over the past few weeks by rising violence about other shootings, principally Buffalo, by the intense political rhetoric going on of, of political jockeying, of extremism, and this rapidly opening chasm in our society all around 
identity politics. We are, many of us are wondering, like, what can we do? What might we do? Where do we go from here? With this kind of brokenness, with this kind of brokenness at the level of society, we need to stop looking big and start looking local. Act big, do votes, do things in society, but we need to be thinking local. And I think maybe just the beginnings of an answer to all these important questions, you know, where do we go from here? What should we be doing? The beginnings of an answer to that lie in a prayer in John's gospel. So for context, this is Jesus's final prayer according to John. In the other gospel stories, we have, um, we have Jesus, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane asking that this cup may pass from him. But that's not what happens in John's gospel. Jesus, facing his own death, facing betrayal, watching this close-knit, you know, family, this close-knit group of his disciples fall apart, Jesus prays. He prays for his followers and for those whose lives will eventually be touched by his followers. And today we get to hear the very end of that prayer. So let's dive in now together. If, if you follow along by reading at home, uh, this is John's Gospel, uh, chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. Jesus, already in the prayer, speaking to God, says this. I ask not only on behalf of these, meaning his disciples, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, that they may become completely one, so that, in the, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love which you have, have loved me may be in them and I in them. This is the end of a prayer. The end of a prayer of a man who is about to be arrested, beaten, tried, humiliated, killed. And as we hear it, it it, I don't know, it sounds in our hearing, in English hearing, our, our language, um, even just to modern ears, like this muddled mess of Jesus repeating over and over what happens with, with God and with these followers and for that to happen for the whole world. And there's this word play that goes on in the middle of it between oneness and inness, where unity and intimate relationship, real love, all that's starting to happen where, where it's all shared and it's mixing together and they can frankly be a lot to unpack, right? But this prayer at its heart is very simple. It's hard for us to lean into, to live into consistently. It can be hard to maintain what Jesus is asking for all the time. But what Jesus is actually asking of God is very simple. At its heart is something profoundly true that the world often forgets and that the world often refuses to believe. It's all about love. I mean, the meaning of life in our tradition is love. That's the whole meaning of life. That's it. It's no bigger than that. Love alone can mend a broken heart. Love alone can change the world. And that is the point of this prayer. I mean, the very vision of our church here at PCW says that life change starts here. Now, 
we don't say those words about this being a self-help church where if you come to us, all your wildest dreams will come true or that whatever is broken inside, we will somehow magically fix. That's not what we're doing. Instead, we are admitting as a group of people, a people that are, you know, have a spiritual life, a, a group of people who have discovered that in our shared life together, we can admit that when we come face to face with the love of God, we are transformed. When people come face to face with God, something happens. And so as the sun sets, for Jesus's ministry. He goes off on his own. He goes off on his own to pray. And he prays for God to be finally understood in the world by and through the force of love being shared by Jesus's followers. That's a lot. Jesus is praying that finally God will be understood by the world when the world sees Jesus' followers loving each other and loving this world. Tacitly, what that also means is believing the right things about God is not the center point of our faith. The center point of our faith is love. Love being lived out and put into action into the world. That is the center of our faith. And so here we are. Facing another week of confusion and pain and suffering over senseless loss. We're facing another reminder of a society that is split along political lines. We're also forced to reckon with the fact that in many cases, most cases, I would venture to say, the church increasingly seems like a mirror of a fragmented society. Those are words that actually come from uh, a professor at Austin Theological Seminary named uh, Philip Browning Hassel. I love how he puts it. He, he's looking at American society. He's looking at our society. He looks at the church and he says that we, the church, too often end up simply being a mirror for this fragmented society. And this is all the opposite of Jesus's final prayer. We too often reflect the, so the society that we are part of instead of being an invitation to the world to take part in something deeper, something that is more real, something that is more true. In his last prayer, Jesus begs God that Jesus' followers may demonstrate such extreme love that the world itself wakes up and pays attention. This, this is what we are called to do. And right now, right now, the world needs us, the church, more than ever. My question is, Will we continue to simply be a mirror of that fragmented world out there, or will we be a part of God's answered prayer for Jesus? Today, today, this church, PCW, is ordaining and installing officers for our church community. So this is happening now in our online worship and in both of our in-person worship experiences. And elders and deacons will begin new roles as leaders in our church. And for, some, for reasons I've never fully understood, there is this huge difference between the worship service for pastors being ordained and installed and the other types of church leaders. And this year, I want to change that. The end of most ordination or installation services for pastors includes a charge for the pastor and a charge for the congregation. That means they're given something to do. And so for those who are beginning their new roles as elders and deacons in the church today, I want to charge you in the way that you'll be a leader. I want to charge you to take your vows that you are taking today. Take those vows seriously. Be friends in ministry to one another. Support each other. Lead your people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. 
Show the love and justice of Jesus Christ in everything that you do. Use your leadership. Use your position to create opportunities for people to encounter the very presence of the divine through our worship. As they come together to learn, as they celebrate life together, connecting with each other over food and drink, hanging out on our lawn, being in people's homes together. And also as they learn to follow Jesus's footsteps as they serve others in the world. Make sure they are encountering the very presence of God as they live and exercise love in the world through everything you do. Use your life in such a way that the people of this church will experience and be utterly transformed by the overwhelming love of God. Now for you, everybody watching at home, everybody who will be on Sunday in person with us, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're technically a member of this congregation or someone who participates in this church, new, old, everything in between. Here's what I charge you. I charge you to respond. Find your place here in this church and join in. Discover how your life can be more through relationships, through intimacy, sharing your life with others because not because you would agree with them, but because love isn't red or blue. Go beyond giving your leaders your thoughts and prayers. And just as they begin to lead this church to go beyond offering our thoughts and prayers as the world hurts. These new leaders are going to be charged with leading us into a way of being where we get to be part of transformation for the world you get to follow with them. You get to be a part of it. The fact is, there is so much inaction that is gonna come out of the horrors that we see time and again happening in the world. I have no answer for the politics of it all. But we can be just the sort of people that Jesus begs for in his final prayer. And it starts today. If only we will be opening to offering and receiving real relationships instead of our thoughts and prayer, thoughts and prayer, rinse and repeat. If only we're open. So friends, as new leaders start their role, as we consider our place Yes, in society, but in our communities, in our, this church community, with our friends, with our families, when we pause to think about our place together, gathering together, I charge you to say no to thoughts and prayers and go do something that matters. You too can offer love that can change this world.
At this time, we are thankful, grateful, excited to be able to share as one community the ordination and installation of some of our newest officers of the church, uh, deacons who are entering into their uh, time of service here at PCW. The vows you're about to hear are uh, not unique to just deacons. They are the same vows that take place for deacons, for ruling elders, and also for pastors. And the only difference actually is the very, very final vow, which for all three is extremely similar and is different only in the role or the tasks that they do for leadership in the life of the church. As you hear them make these vows for themselves, we encourage you at home to think about the ways in which you're responding to God's call in your own life, either to grow spiritually or to be there for neighbors, to serve in your communities, possibly even find your own ways of leading here in this church community, through small groups, through volunteering, et cetera. And at this time, I invite you, the new officers, to join with us and answer honestly these vows. So the first one, do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? If so, please say, I do. I do. I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If so, please say, I do. I do. The fourth. Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided uh, by our confessions? If so, please say, I do. Or, I, I do. <laughs> I will. I will. The I fifth will. one. I will. will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. I will with God's help. And the final one for me before handing over, I guess, to Marcy here in a moment. Uh, will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, please say, I will. I will. Yeah. I will. Do you promise to further peace, unity, and purity of the church? If so, say, I do. I, I do. do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will, I will with God's, God's help. And this is the one that is distinct for the deacons. Will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ if so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Friends, thank you for your service. You are now called, ordained, and installed to leadership in this church as deacons of God's word. We congratulate you and look forward to joining you in your ministry, listening to your leadership, and following along with you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. As we prepare to enter into a time of prayer together, if you have a prayer concern or would like to speak with a pastor about something that you are celebrating in life or something that you are struggling with and want to add to our prayer list, please contact one of the pastoral staff or at the office. Let us join together in prayer. 
God of comfort, we come to you today and we don't know what to say. How do we react to a world where people choose violence and hatred? We know that you are a God of love, but times like this make it difficult for us to see that. So many of us feel like there is no way to change the world, or that what we are trying to do to bring about change is sometimes little more than a band-aid. How long must we cry out for innocent lives to be spared, for people not to hate each other because of religion or ethnicity or gender? We try and show love to others as best we can, God, even if it's not our first choice of response. We know that you have called us to live lives of love and forgiveness, that you call us to follow Christ in his example of acceptance, love, inclusion, and kindness. We know that in our heads and our hearts, but we struggle with putting it into practice at times. Sometimes what we want to choose is rage and anger. And it would be easier to choose those things, to retaliate in kind when we see injustices and hatred and violence in this world. But we know you call us to a way of peace. God of healing, we cry out to you to come into all the broken and sick places in this world. Those places where people are physically sick and broken, where people are dealing with disease and pain every day. And we cry out for you to come into all the places where people and societies are broken and sick in their hearts and minds, the places where arguments start, where misunderstandings occur, where judgment and hate wins out. Come into these places with your love and power and heal us of our iniquities, our bad choices, our unfair circumstances, our diseases and our sins. We particularly ask you to come into places where people have had to fight for their lives, where they had to defend justice and right in the world and have suffered and died for it. We pray for those who have served and are serving in the military, for those who have seen unspeakable things or have had to do harmful things in order to protect and defend others. We pray for peace for those who are traumatized, who suffer from diseases like PTSD because they were simply standing up for those who couldn't stand up for themselves. God of wonder, we can't fully comprehend how you know what is in our hearts and minds. What we pray before we lift those prayers up to you. We believe that you hear us when we cry out to you, even if we don't know understand how. You are the ruler and creator of the universe, and yet you love each one of us intimately. This love astounds us, and we can only hope to begin to return it to you by living lives together in community, which show your love in the world. Support us and strengthen us for the task. Help us to be examples of love and light, especially in communities that have suffered in these past weeks in Irvine, California, in Texas, in New York, and unfortunately so many other places, God. We pray all these things to you, knowing that you hear us, using the prayer that Christ gave to us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Join us next week as we hear about the birth of the church, its birthday, through a story about the Holy Spirit showing up and changing everything for everyone in the story. And until then, know that you are loved. Despite what we see in all the brokenness of the world, know that you are loved far more than you could ever hope or imagine and be at peace.